I grew up in Atlanta as a boy, even though I always knew that I was a girl. This total split between who I was inside and how I was allowed to present in the world made it impossible for me to see myself accurately, made it impossible for me to see my future. I did imagine a future. It was a future of Star Trek. It was a future of Star Wars. Who I actually was, however, was nowhere to be found. Now, as an adult, I want to give myself the gift of imagining a future with me in it. But even more than that, as trans and gender non-conforming people, creating a vision of our future at a time of social backlash, violent erasure, and plague is a radical act. That's why I'm taking this journey to talk to some of the brightest and bravest people I know to find our future. Like all stories, going forwards means sometimes looking backwards first. I have to go back to the place where I started to see where I'm going and to imagine where we're all going. I'm starting this journey in Atlanta, where I grew up, talking to my friend, activist Tony Michelle Williams, just steps away from my elementary school. I want to know if there was ever a moment when you were a child when you could have imagined as you are now? It was once at my sixth birthday party. And um, I used to love the Power Rangers. Maybe I was a Mighty Morphin one, honey. But particularly, I like um, one of the evil villains. Oh, yeah. And she had the Madonna bra and the large horn. And girl. That was you. That was me. And so whenever I would play in the neighborhood with the friends, I would want to always play that role. And so at my sixth birthday party, my mom, of course. And she I, got you the boy. And so she got me the blue and black ranger. And baby, I just cried <laughs> the whole party. What I used to do as a kid is, for this happened for a long time, like for a long time. At the end of the day, when I was in my room by myself in bed, I would literally reimagine my entire day as if I had been a girl. It was the entire replay. It was like me redoing it. Period. And totally rewriting every single day. Yes. That's just so sexy. It's so, <laughs> it's so sexy. It's so powerful because it is, it is really the magic of trans people. That's the magic of queer people. That's the magic of our children, right? That they have such expansive imaginations. For me, when I got to be 18, I felt like I had to leave Atlanta. Yeah. You went to college in Virginia. Yeah. But then you came back to Atlanta. What about Atlanta to you said, this is, what, this is where there's a future for me? Oh, I get it's home. You have to leave. You have to leave at some point, whether you leave for two years or four years, 10. You do have to leave Atlanta. Um, and if you were good to Atlanta, Baby, it will always be kind back to you. So for you, what is it that you imagine mm. for the future? I imagine music. And with imagining music, I see and imagine Black bodies, Black children basking and moving like in joy and in certainty, like and in love and in connection. At 28 years old, for the first time, literally about five months ago, I imagined life for myself. That like I could live past this. Leaving where we grew up to create a future is what many trans people have done. And so many of us have ended up in San Francisco's Tenderloin District. That's why I'm headed there to see Arya Said, who runs the world's first trans historic district. There are still clues about our collective future and our collective past. Trans people had been continuously living in this neighborhood since the 1920s. It was the red light district. It's the central city. 
all of those contributing factors influenced how trans people were able to live in a place like San Francisco. When you finally got here at 19, leaving home at 17, what were you trying to actualize? While I was in college, there were tons of people from the Bay Area who were going to school uh, at where I went to school in Southern Oregon. And so they were like, oh, if you were in San Francisco, like you would be really accepted. Um, so I came with $60 and was like, I'm going to San Francisco and I heard they're gonna give me my surgery and hormones. Got to the Greyhound station here and then um, was staying at a hostel in the Tenderloin um, and put my name on a bed for the youth shelter um, when I ran out of money. I remember when I was sleeping on the train and I pay, I used the BART payphone um, at Powell Street BART and I called my mom and she was like, you're insane, just come back. But her condition was that I couldn't come back looking like this, right? That was always her thing. But I was like, well, I'm not going back as a failure. I'm staying in the city till I become the queen of the city. When did you first imagine yourself to be able to live as you are now? Yeah, that was what kept me alive. You know, that someday you could be who you want to be. And I think I had a craving just to be normal. Stories like Aria's take center stage in the hit television show Pose. The show uses trans history to create the idea of trans possibilities. And I'm what do you see as our future? It looks like us being human beings. Like us walking into places and not having to say, hi, I'm trans. But hi, I'm a doctor. Hi, I'm an educator. Hi, I'm a lawyer. Hi, I clean the streets. But it shouldn't be, hi, I'm trans. So when you wake up and you hear a girl is murdered or a trans man is murdered, it becomes really personal because you think to yourself, this could be me. Because even while creating our futures, harsh realities can bring us right back to the present. Yo, the reality is I spend many days crying. Mm -hmm. uh, when I get the news, just like everybody gets the news over Instagram, when you're just trying to check for pretty pictures of what your friends are doing, and then, oh my God. Against the backdrop of ongoing pain and seeming hopelessness, is a bright future still possible? Issa Noyola, who fights for the most marginalized of the marginalized, helps us answer this question. We're standing in front of the Eloy detention facility um, here in Arizona, where um, people are being held who come to the United States mm -hmm. as asylees, as refugees. There are trans people that are locked on the inside mm -hmm. who are here only because they were fleeing for their lives yeah. or they needed to have a better life for a variety of reasons. It's yeah. the only reason why they're in there. Yeah. When we're standing here, like, how does it make you feel about the future? That is to say, how can we yeah. stand here and be talking about a future that's anything but hard. Yeah. It always gives me chills. Um, it's always really hard to drive and to realize that our people are locked up inside unjustly um, and they're experiencing human rights violations on the daily basis. They're being tortured, they're being um, held um, when there's no reason to hold them um, in, in, a, in a way that is denying their humanity. Are the trans people inside they came here for a better future. Yeah. Do you still think that they have hope for that? I think so. I mean, a lot of them are there with that hope because they've seen the ways that they're, you know, they, they're, they've tried everything that they can. It's like Roxana, who died in detention center a couple years ago, yeah. the only reason why she left was because she was an HIV positive trans woman who couldn't access health care, who even she couldn't find employment. Um, she was being, although her family supported her, she was being harassed on a daily basis. And so she joined a caravan and, you know, only to face her death. But against all the odds, plunging ourselves into the unknown, if we make it to the other side, what does that look like? Shia Diamond, who moved from incarceration to pop stardom, has some answers.
Do you see yourself in the future? Wow. I don't think we were ever given permission to imagine um, just the possibilities of our future. You know, um, I feel like that I probably wouldn't make it to my 20s. Here it was two years ago, I was kissing 40. And now just looking here and just looking at how far I've come, um, I didn't see myself pass incarceration for the 10 years. Um, it, it was so many, um, like dark days and that I just thought I wouldn't make it or survive. I thought either the streets would kill me or I would just take myself out. And just to see a different version of myself, to see a more happy, uh, a, a, a more confident, you know, version of myself is, is, is still, I'm still looking on the outside, you know. It still feels new. It does, it does, it, it does. As trans people, our individual journeys have weakened the very idea of gender binaries. Moving beyond the idea of only men or women creates the possibility of a future that's wide open, a future without limits. I don't want to pinpoint what the future looks like. Huh. I might be able to say what the future feels like, but I don't want to say what it looks like. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, actually, challenging the gender binary doesn't look like a certain thing. I contain so much more than what I look like. <laughs> That's always going to be an approximation. Mm. But like energetically and spiritually, I have entire ecosystems in me. Are you going to be committed to what you don't see? And I think in my world, we are just as committed to what we don't see as what we do. When we limit people's imagination, that ultimately kills any sort of liberation. And I refuse to allow anyone to stifle my creativity and my imagination. To me, that is something I've, as a child, was very important to me. And I think that's my ancestors whispering in my ear and saying they can't get your mind. Like, no matter what, no one can get my mind. Binary wasn't a thing. Like, there were at least four genders in so many different cultures. Like, I think we need to have a full circle return to that. And remember, like, we've always been here. We're a part of humanity. We're natural. I want to see a return to that. We carry with us not only the wisdom of our ancestors, but also wisdom from our own experiences and our own pasts. If your present self could go back to yourself at 10, what do you think that you would tell them now? Man, I'd be like, I'd be like, I know you know who you are and I know you're terrified, but number one, you're gonna figure it out, you're gonna be okay, and number two, just like I'm telling all the kids who show up to my talk, everything's on a continuum. You don't need a box. You don't need to technically find a definition online that you connect with. It helps at the time being, but you don't need it. You will be with family and a chosen, a chosen family and luckily enough, a biological family that loves you, which is a privilege to have but you'll figure it out and you'll be okay. It's strange because in a way you're helping to create the future by existing in the present? Yes, I, yeah, I guess, which is very nice to say. And I hope I'm doing a good job creating that. Future. I mean, but I wonder if that has that, has that ever occurred to you, right? That like being the person who you are right now, that you actually are giving other people a future. It's a really nice thought. I, I don't think I stop enough to think about it. I think memory is important because if you can at least own your own history, that just gives you a little bit more fire to create more history, you know? Right. So like if we can right. claim the stories of the Marsha P. Johnsons or mm -hmm. the black trans folks like Mary Jones and Francis mm -hmm. Thompson in the 1800s, mm -hmm. um, that gives us a, a starting point, you know, that's further back than we ever could have imagined. Driven by our memory and our creativity, documenting our stories will form our collective futures. Artist Fatima Jamal explains why. What is it that you're trying to create? An archive. <laughs> An archive of what? An archive of my existence. I do believe that one day, like my nieces and nephews, my little cousins, right, they will ask more questions about my absence, you know? Mm. 
they will mm -hmm. ask more questions about the path that I took for my life. What do you want them to find? And what do you want them to learn? A life otherwise, you know, because I think we all know that life, life is possible, but a life otherwise um, is what transness um, does, though it may come with the consequence of um, isolation. It also comes with the consequence of joy, right, of, of a life not controlled by mm -hmm. others' gazes, by others' um, desires and expectations for who you should be and become. I want them to see and test the limits of your own body. The most beautiful thing about transness is choice and decision making. A, a trans perspective and a trans lens on the world could only free us all. Because whatever future we are building, it will ultimately become a memory. It will ultimately be remembered for what we leave behind. And that's what I have learned on this journey, that all of our futures, grounded in creativity, depend on remembering all those who came before us and imagining new worlds for those yet to come.